Hey everybody, it's me, Kapu Luigi. Thanks for waiting for my Wario Land 3 Let's Play. Uh, gonna just see the full intro here again, even though it was in the teaser. Just because it's easier to start from a clear file. Uh, so yeah, a little bit of backstory if you're just joining us. I first Let's Played this game in like 2010, I think, the summer before I went off to college. I beat like 60% of the game pre-recorded and... Oh, well, some silly stuff happened. Also, like, God, you would have had to been paying attention to this 13 years ago for that to begin to uh, be a relevant context. But thanks for watching. Hey, first off, I got to plug Pizza Tower. I think if you're watching Wario Land 3 Let's Play in the year 2023, you probably already know about Pizza Tower. But just in case, great new Wario-like, land-like uh Love Pizza Tower. Alright, this is where the trailer left off, I believe. A hidden figure says, Are you aware, Wario? This world is in the music box you were peering into. I was the god that protected this world. But one day, a wicked being sealed away my power and took control of this world. Wario... I want you to find the five music boxes needed to break the hidden seal and recover my powers. If you find them, I'll send you back to your own world. <laughs> of course, all the treasure you find is yours to keep. Will you help me? Yeah, not even a not even a superficial yes no drop down box there. You don't get to make that kind of decision for Wario. Uh, so I, I, like, wrote out a whole little spiel of just, like, what I think about this game. This game left a huge impact on me. Um, I guess the first thing it shows you, this, the perennial World 1-1, one, one, uh, where Mario teaches you about jumping and Goombas. This teaches you that you can break the cracked blocks, and you can't break the not cracked blocks. All pleasing purple color. It's interesting Wario's, like, black and white in this. I always use that Smash skin for that reason. But yeah, there, there's, like, a lot going on here, and, like, this game is so fundamental to me. I can't even pretend that I'm, like, looking at this with blind eyes, but yeah, you can see Ammonites here. You can kill them by jumping up into them like that, but can't really do anything here. If anything, this level, like, exists to show you all the stuff Wario can't do yet. He almost, like, the game doesn't feel great to control at this point. I never played Wario Land 2 as a kid. I still haven't really played much of it, but, uh, I imagine if you've played this after playing that, this would be, like, quite jarring because your movement's so limited. Uh, Wario basically can only walk and jump and do the famous shoulder bash, which, uh, got a... Exciting resurgence in um, WarioWare get to get it together. After uh, God, I, I don't even want to think about how long it's been since um, Shake It came out, but that was a nice little reference. Maybe Smash Post Ultimate will uh, have a little more. There was a green coin there. That was a hint that the green key is up there. Uh, yeah, this game really does throw a lot at you at once, and I think that works in its favor. Uh, there are these caterpillars that turn you into Yarn Wario, which I will certainly show off at some point, because it is necessary. Yeah, this game like really cements what Wario Land 2 started, where Wario is just completely indestructible for the most part. The worst that can happen to him is an inconvenience. Look at that, he got an axe. Uh as you may or may not be able to glean from the UI there, slash already know how this game works and just like it. Um, there are four treasures in each world which serve as, like, different exits, and you have to get a different key hidden somewhere. That was remixed probably for the better in Wario Land 4, in that you have one key and you, like, go back out through an alternate path in the level... Uh, I don't need to explain Wario Land 4 here. I, I, anybody who wants to know about Wario Land 4, there are ample resources for you to learn about it. 
eventually you can break through that wall. Uh, this level is the introduction to the day-night mechanic, effectively. There are these zombies here, and the streetlights that are only on that cure you from zombification. I will not be getting zombified, because just like Yarn Waria, that is something that I will be uh, required to do later on for just the standard completion of this game. There's the red coin, indicating the red keys somewhere around here. I don't know when I figured out that's what those coins were doing, but it definitely wasn't my first playthrough. Um, okay, there's the gray chest. I think you need... Yeah, okay, you actually need to use one of the transformations. And I say one of the transformations, because... Not that you would actually know this from your first time playing through the level, but the day-night mechanic here works that you have the zombies at night, like we do right now, and during the day there are the chef enemies that turn you into fat Wario, which are the first way that you can break those hard blocks. Um, and that just times out based on walking and jumping instead of interacting with the light, so the street lights mechanic doesn't really matter there. But again, unless you were just, like, immediately replaying these levels for some reason, you would not realize that it was designed that way, which is interesting. Like, putting that kind of effort into a somewhat major mechanic, but then not having the player, like... Yeah, there, there's a really curious thing in this level, which... I'm getting a little ahead of myself here, but I think at this part we might be able to get back to that. Um, there's an upper section to this level where you see either the sun or the moon based on day or night, and it, the sun sets you on fire, the moon just stuns you, and both of them have the same net effect of making you drop out of the sky, but like, there's a lot of little things that really don't matter very much uh, based on the time of day, which is... An interesting way to do that in a game, like, I don't know. I can't really think of too many platformers that have a day, to n day and night mechanic to begin with. Like, Fungi Forest from DK64 is the first thing that comes to mind, and it's pretty bad when DK64 is the first parallel. I mean, not that any of this is bad. I just find this game, like, really fascinating. Like, even compared to Wario Land 4, which has very deliberate design, there's a lot going on here that was, like, deliberate, but more for, like, a world-building set. I didn't even point out, like, the weird mole enemies that I've been walking over in this level and in uh, Out of the Woods that are... Those I'll definitely get to in this part, but uh, they're just there to catch your eye to think about, like, other ways you could theoretically be going if you had more ways to interact with the world. I do think you start off with a little too few things that you can actually do. Uh, if, if Wario Land was an active series, I would be fascinated to see if they ever found a middle ground between this and Wario Land 4, where you just start with everything. Because... The full move set isn't really too much to deal with. Making some of the stuff context sensitive, like Wario Land 4 essentially keeps the hard blocks mechanic. Um, also, this is the first level that like really tells you about day and night because you need to do it both ways. Um, I'll show the level off a little bit. I I just did a hundred percent playthrough of this. Um, right when it came out on the Switch, because this is one of my favorite games, and that's what inspired me to uh, let's play it and dust off the old channel after ill-advised Conquer LP a couple years ago. Um, God, where do I... Okay, I just keep climbing up that ladder. But yeah, this is a really cool game. It, like, just... It always feels so huge to me even though, like, I now know that it's not huge. It just does a heck of a lot with the technology that it has access to. Uh, okay, here's the chef enemy I was talking about earlier. 
Uh, I don't think you actually need to use Fat Wario for this part, though. Yeah, you can use Fat Wario to break through this block that I'm standing on right there. But, uh, faster not to do it. Oh, okay, well, here's Fat Wario. This is a, uh, style run. <laughs> Wario Land 3. But yeah, the moon emphasizing that this level is the way it is at night is perhaps a little blunt, but works to communicate that being a mechanic. There's another much more obvious mechanical difference that you will see shortly. And this took me an embarrassingly long time as a kid. I'm pretty sure I talked about this like in my original Let's Play this 13 years ago. I, this is actually not the first time I've recorded this. I had an initial run where I had the sound on my TV on and it just was, like, way too loud. And I didn't want the first part to already have, like, a glaring technical issue. Um, because you were just hearing all the sound effects echoing. But, uh... Point being, that first run, I think I got up that ladder, like, on the first try without thinking about it. But that's not the authentic Wario Land 3 experience. That is not how I played when I was, like seven years old playing this for the first time. So you'll see, just like the two halves of the slate we got in the last two levels, this appears to be half of a... Calling it a scroll is a little weird. Like, it does seem like it's just another stone slab. I guess you don't actually ever see the high-resolution graphics for the stuff, but yeah, here's the difference in the day. For one, you don't have to climb up that ladder to get back out of the sand because you can just jump like it's classic Mario quicksand, but then you also have these hands that pull you down in. And you can either time it so you just quickly jump across after they finish their grab animation, or I think the frames where they can actually grab you are short enough that if you just jump from one to the next... Maybe, maybe not. Let, let's try that out. Okay, you can't mash out of it. Or if you can mash out of it, I didn't do it right. I thought maybe, maybe there's slight differences between this and like similar enemies later in the game. Because I thought you could mash and Wario would like shift from left to right and jiggle himself out of it. Very possible those are just not the exact same enemy. But yeah, here we're in the Sun Shrine, and this is an interesting little check to like make sure you know your basic moves. You have to know that you can duck jump to get that. I don't, I don't think there's any other way to do it. The duck jump is an odd mechanic. It is actually pretty useful because like ducking Wario has a smaller hitbox and is like immune to certain types of enemy transformations. It might actually just be due to his hitbox, but like. I don't know, I'll try to remember to point that out when it happens, but there actually is, like, a decent amount of utility to duck walking like that. Anyway, this is Spring Wario. Uh, this is... This is, uh... Useful for jumping higher than you can normally jump, but here it is pretty clearly just a, uh... Inconvenience, as most transformations in this game are. I really like the shocked sprite for when they're bumped. And here's the silver chest. It also sort of like alludes to the silver chest being the first one you're supposed to get and the red being the second because you have day and then night. But if you, unless you like mess around and just like exit a level ineffectually, you'll get here at night. So I don't know. It really doesn't mean much of anything. And yeah, that does look like a scroll when it's all pieced together. I might be thinking a little too much about this pixel art. Here we have the volcano's base. Uh, this is where the game really starts opening up, I'd like to say. Probably saying that a little prematurely, but uh, yeah. I like this. Gives you some questions, like... Or... Gives you some question. Um, makes you wonder what's going on with those cracked blocks over there. 
I don't think that area actually opens up until much later. Like, if you're familiar enough with the mechanics, you might think Rolling Wario is supposed to clear that out. God, I love this just, like, repeated diagonal texture being the volcano. The sense of space in these levels is so interesting. Because, like, there's a whole... I think it's technically supposed to be an elevated section of this level, but because you have to enter it, like, by going through that one area, I think, um, that I was mentioning looks like you should be able to roll through it. I always associate it with being, like, lower down, but it's, like, pretty clearly supposed to be midway up the volcano. I don't know, you're probably not supposed to think too hard about these little, uh, set piece environments, but I don't know, like, the effort they put into making this feel like a interconnected world, I just really appreciate. Like, I don't know what's going on here, like, you have the other side of the volcano, obviously, but then you have, like, just some other cave overhang with, like, terraria wall texture blocks going on. It has, like, some internal logic to it, but feels very otherworldly in a way that, like, I don't think normal Mario quite captures. So anyway, here's the first boss. It's a matrio matrioshka type thing, except it doesn't actually do anything with that. Um, I made that look Easier than it was for me as a little kid. But yeah, something I like about the bosses is because nothing can damage Wario for the most part. You don't actually uh, get killed by the boss's attack. You just turn into Spring Wario and then you would just bounce up here and be returned to the main area. And if you wanted to return to the main area and didn't have the high jump, you could use the couple frames at the end there where that hammer lifts you up, it's fun stuff. So anyway, the treasure we get here is pretty exciting. This is none other than Wario's, uh, what I like to call the super overalls, based on the naming convention of the uh, super boots and ultra boots in Paper Mario. I don't know if these have official names. L let me know in the comments. Also, you'll notice that little spike guy has a colorful parasol spike there. I always thought Wario looks like he has a chef's hat in the, like, far left default Wario controls introduction thing. So yeah, here's where the game becomes non-linear, so to speak. Uh, you get the little animation signifying there's something new to find in N3 and N1. I'll do them in numerical order. So now we can finally break these cracked blocks that were taunting us at the start of the first level. Uh, solid blocks are still off limits. But yeah, if you remember the funky little mole creature that we stepped on right as we went into this area. Yeah, he has a little funny animation showing he doesn't like being stepped on. And it resets when you jump, but there's no way to interact with that with your base move set. But once you have the ground pound... There's, like, so much effort put into this, like, that he goes faster when you're not on him. And, like, he really has to be slammed all the way into the ground to be killed. And then there's the alternate way to get back up if you do that. Like, I'm pretty sure that enemy... I'm almost positive that enemy only shows up literally the two times that we've already seen. Including that one. <laughs> but, like... When you consider they could have just had cracked blocks on the ground, which you couldn't have broken anyway, uh, it's very inspired. There's a lot of stuff that... Oh, here's Flat Wario. That makes you uh, just curious to interact. So this fat guy, like, I always thought he was a turtle. Leave me a comment if you thought he was a turtle. I don't think there's, like, anything other than looking kind of like a cartoon turtle that made me think that. And, like, he doesn't have a shell. Maybe I thought the, like, colon three face 
going on there when he's flipped was turtle-like in some way. Yeah, God, just the, like... I think I literally just now realized the gears in the wall are supposed to be, like, a music box thing. I never really thought about that, and, like... I'm not sure if that shows up anywhere else. That's that's interesting. There there is a lot of polish, particularly in the, in this uh the first few levels. That I don't think it's absent in the later levels, but like I don't know. You don't you don't ever really have anything like those little moles for the other uh types of upgrades. So if you consider that like essential to your game design. That's, uh, something you can only get here. So this is the golf mini game. This golf mini game is definitely used too much, and it's not really signified as well as you would hope, but, uh, it's fun. I did not lose yet. Um, so I am not above using the, uh, <laughs> Nintendo Switch Online suspend menu and rewind functionality to cheese these if necessary but I'll make sure I give a good try. I don't know. I didn't have much trouble with them in my recent 100% playthrough. Also, I'll just show Yarn Wario because why not? It's Yarn Wario, baby. Hey, took me where I needed to go. Yep, but that minigame clear block just moves up when you clear the minigame and if you didn't understand how that interaction works here, you're in for a treat with the next level, which I think will be the last one I do for this part. Mmm, <clears throat> honey pot. Winnie the Pooh, eat your heart out. I forgot this was a thing that just did that on its own. Yeah, so that created a new level, the Pool of Rain. That's a real fun level. Um... Looking forward to heading over there. And you just... Because now you can swim over that, I guess. Get to the next level, so... It's very interesting. Nintendo doesn't really release platformers that are quite this open-ended these days. Like, I don't know. I, I don't want to be like a uh, big old nostalgia guy, but I do think there's some stuff pretty unique to this game. Maybe for the best, when you consider how it f compares to Wario Land 4, but, uh... Oh yeah, these are the enemies that you can just be immune to if you're ducking. And yeah, it's not because you're in the duck state, it's... It must be the hitbox. I think they just start going back to the top of the screen when they're a single block above. So yeah, the only real point of coins in this game is to play this golf mini game, and you will never really be in risk of running out unless you're like very much trying to avoid collecting coins or have a lot of trouble with this and aren't using the Nintendo Switch Online or Wine features, which admittedly a lot of people playing this game wouldn't have had access to. You can see lava over there. That's an instant out of bounds. Um, I can't even see how... F I think if I do it right on the cusp of the, like, dithered white and yellow and the full yellow, oh, I might be good. That was a little too strong. Okay, well, shows what I know. I know I said I wasn't going to abuse this, but actually, uh... Sue me. Um, I can pretty much promise there wasn't going to be any, any interesting content from uh, redoing the other maps. The fact I got one of the other maps to begin with was all I really would have wanted to show off here. Uh, okay, so I think the red key might just be up here. It is not, but we can actually clear that out and... Yeah. This is the Wario Land 3 experience, honestly. 
just a little bit of tedious walking back to where you were, but the movement's quick, and the levels don't overstay their welcome, so it's not the end of the world. If anything, it makes it more justified that I use the suspend menu to cheat in the golf mini game because I think there's a coin up here. Yeah, so these coins are interesting. There's eight of them in each level. You genu uh, generally aren't going to be able to get all of them until you've unlocked every part of each level, either through Wario's abilities or overworld stuff. Uh, okay, actually, that was just... Later in the game, they, like, have some kind of lame puzzles where it's just, like, you have to go up or down through a series of, like, slots where you can't see what's on the other side, and one of them has the key, and you have to, like, go up adjacent to it to see where it is and then count to get back in, and I was just overthinking that one. That one is not like that, but you'll see what I mean later. Geronimo. Oh yeah, if it wasn't clear, Puffy Wario will keep going up until he gets transformed into a different type of Wario or hits a solid block. And these fall through, or rather, ascend through platforms are not solid. Okay, alright. I, I thought that's what you would get here if it wasn't required to unlock something. So that's a crayon. I think it'll show... You, you'll notice there's a crayon here along with the music notes for some curious reason. So that little area that we walk through when we go from the north to the... Um, east quad... Or, uh, north to west... <laughs> Well, I always thought that west meant left, so it's a little weird you get there going to the right, but it actually does make sense in 3D space. I'm just being a goof. It bothers me that there's a blue pixel and a black pixel, like, in that quadrant. And it's a solid pixel on the east quad. I, I never noticed that before. I should just not call attention to it. Don't look at that part. Don't worry about it. I do love how you can see, like, the right most of those two trees there. And it, like, adds a little physical sense of space. And, of course, the mountain is still the centerpiece. Um, I guess the area, like, the volcano's base area is supposed to be, like, some sort of cave in the side of the mountain. Which I guess makes sense if it's a music box just made to look interesting. Well, th thanks for watching. I hope you find this deep dive in what is easily one of my top 10 most nostalgic games interesting. Uh, check this out on the Nintendo Switch Online if you have access to that. And if you don't, check it out by whatever means are necessary. Uh, it's a good game. Tells you a lot about Wario. Tells you a lot about, like, compartmentalized Metroidvanias. Great stuff. Can't recommend it enough. Thanks for watching Semper Games.